In the musical landscape, artists are always trying to find ways to stay relevant and staying on top of their artistic game. It's not an easy task of breaking into the industry, but with the right amount of talent and connections, you most likely get your foot through the door. But staying relevant is not always as easy as 1, 2, 3, leading some artists to resort to all sorts of stunts, creating shop value online, or trying to start unnecessary drama beefing with a fellow artist in the industry. The R&B singer Carrie Hilson, an artist that rose to fame in the mid-2000s, had a very promising career and was prompted to being the next black female artist that would be successful alongside Rihanna, Sierra, and Beyonce. The singer would attempt to beef with Beyonce, but that decision would cost Carrie Hilson her career. Before we get into the meat and potatoes of this video, if you don't know who Miss Carrie Hilson is, let's do a quick rundown if you're not familiar with the Carrie Hilson. Ooh. Because no one will sponsor me, I will sponsor myself. This video is brought to you by my Instagram page. That's at Don underscore Angelo. D-O-N underscore A-N-G-I-L-L-O. -L -O. Just follow me and send me a DM and let me know you're a subscriber from YouTube and I will follow you back. It's that easy. Now that's the end of my shameless plug. Now let's get back to the video. Carrie Hilson was born in Decatur, Georgia and prior her breakthrough as a recording artist, she was a songwriter and background vocalist and worked alongside producers Anthony Dent, mainly in her teens and Polo the Don. Songs Carrie Hilson helped to write are Sierra's Like a Boy, Amarion's Icebox, and Britney Spears' Gimme More that was released from Britney's 2007 Blackout album. At the age of 14, Carrie Hilson was a part of a girl group called Design, but they didn't last for long. In 2007, Carrie Hilson secured a feature on Rich Boy's Good Things with Polo the Don and Timberland's Scream featuring Nicole Scherzinger and the hip-hop electronic club anthem The Way I Are. The latter was a global success, peaking number 3 on the Billboard Hot 100 and reached number 1 in several countries including Australia, Canada, Denmark, Ireland, and the UK. The Way I Are was very catchy and still is 14 years later. With Carrie's appearance on the song, it proved she had star power and the ability to stand next to Timberland, who was already a veteran in the music industry without being overlooked. In a perfect world, Carrie Hilson's debut studio album was released in 2009. The album received mixed reviews from critics and a 65 out of 100 score from Metacritic. Carrie Hilson was praised for being inventive while some critics noted some of the songs lacked personality. The project debuted number 4 in the US and was certified gold by the RIAA in 2009. In a Perfect World was not a perfect album, but on their own, the singles were really amazing, producing 6 singles from a 14 song track list. The third and fourth singles, Turning Me On featuring Lil Wayne and Knock You Down featuring Kanye West and Neo, and yes, the leading single energy was a low-key smash. But Turning Me On and Knock You Down were the most successful. Knock You Down, a futuristic R&B and hip-hop track, was a top 10 hit in the US, peaking number 3 on Billboard's Hot 100, becoming the singer's highest charting lead single as a lead artist, and the single has been certified two times platinum. Turning Me On featuring Lil Wayne was released on December 19, 2008 and was produced by Polo the Don. A remix of the song titled Turning Me Off was leaked online in March of 2009, which caused speculation Kerry Hilson took shots at Beyonce and Sierra. On the song, Kerry Hilson has lines such as, you can dance, she can sing, but need to move it to the left, possibly referencing Sierra's acclaimed dancing ability and Beyonce's hit Irreplaceable and go sit down and have babies. That line was linked to Beyonce as at the time the media and just people in general had this idea that Beyonce should have already been pregnant. Although Carrie Hilson was the hottest new female R&B artist that everyone wanted to work with and people loved her and you know females emulated her hairstyles and yet she did denied that the song was targeted at CNB but even recording that diss track was career suicide if you ask me. Because she was a new artist and she's not a rapper so I did not understand why she would make one so early in her career. Normally R&B artists don't necessarily make diss tracks and if they do, it's not the entire premise. They'll make a diss track like Carrie's cause it was a proper diss track way into their career when they actually have an audience and at the time Carrie Hilson was sharing fans with Beyonce and Sierra and Rihanna. Unless you start out like Billie Eilish, you're leeching off other artists' fanbase. 
In an interview with Devi Dev from Hard Knock TV, Carrie Hilson did reveal Polo de Don was the one that presented the idea to her in the studio. Due to the alleged Beyonce diss, the Beehive have been stinging Carrie Hilson ever since. No Boys Allowed, the singer's last album, was released in 2010 and it wasn't as successful as her first album, selling less than 500,000 copies worldwide. In 2011 at the Soul Train Music Awards, the singer refused to hold a magazine after realizing Beyonce and Jay-Z were on the cover, causing the Beehive to attack her online. In 2013, Carrie Hilson took to Twitter to speak out against the abuse that she received online from Beyonce stance, saying, you have no idea what your hateful words could do to someone's spirit. Years of verbal abuse from strangers all day long. Enough is enough. Over the years, post this track, Kerry Hilson has slowly moved away from the music limelight and has started an acting career. She starred in 2012's Think Like a Man and 2013's Riddick. In 2021, Kerry starred in a few TV films aired on Lifetime, BET, and VH1, and in an April interview this year with Persia Nicole, she has revealed that her beef with Beyonce has ended, with the two meeting and there was a moment of healing. Kerry Hilson also expressed regret of recording the diss track, and she's open to even collaborating with Beyonce in the future. Now, I don't know if there is a moral to the story here, but I hope Stans realizes that issues surrounding your favorite artist and in this case, the issue was kind of non-existent, seeing Beyonce was all crickets. Some things have really nothing to do with us as fans, and all that caping and spreading of hate for your faves doesn't make any sense, and, and it makes your favorite artist look horrible. Carrie Hilson did nothing wrong, in my opinion, because she was never the one that leaked the track. She's an artist and she can create whatever she wants. And I'm not saying fans should not react or even try to defend their favorite artists, but to the extent of the immense amount of backlash Carrie Hilson got for years was kind of overkill and only proves that stan culture can be very toxic. Tell me what you think about Carrie Hilson's career in the comments section. Do you think that Carrie Hilson deserves all the backlash that she received? Do you think she put herself in that situation? So you're like, I don't care. Or do you think that, you know, the beehives take it to a whole different level? Don't forget to like the video and also subscribe to the channel for more content. I'm Don and I will see you in the next one.